Got a Nick Crowley video. Let's watch that. Hi, baby. How are you? It's me, Talika, your munchkin. November 6th, 2013. A video is uploaded to an obscure Weird YouTube start. channel called Sandra 3000 Casey. Weird start. Its creator, 30-year-old Talika Patrick. It's Talika. It was like three people, bro. It was at least five or six. Its purpose. And even when I told people to stop, they literally kept going. To send a heartfelt message to her lover. I got dressed up for you. <clears throat> and I bought flowers. Look. Flowers. A message that would go unreceived, however, with the only viewership coming from Talika herself. <laughs> November 10th, 2013. Just four days after posting her first heartfelt Thank you, basic video, bacon Talika face uploads jokes. what would become her final video. Um, if you were here, this is what it would be your plate. Again, dedicating it to her love, and again, going completely unnoticed, falling into the void that is YouTube, and settling into the endless depths of the site, presumably never to be seen again. Or at least that's how it should have gone. In reality, these videos would eventually be put on display for the whole world to see. As nearly a month following her very first upload, Talika Patrick would disappear, leaving behind a minute trail of clues, the most prominent of which coming from her previously unknown channel, as it would quickly be discovered that things within these videos were- Huh? Why? He's in here just talking. Like, hi, And he's going, over and over. Maybe he just likes the music. Yeah. Really? Uh huh. Really? Brian just likes the music. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> were nothing like how they seemed, giving rise to what would quickly become one of the strangest internet mysteries of all time. This just gets stranger and stranger. The very strange new wrinkle in the case of that missing doctor in Michigan, Talika Patrick. Just imagine that you were here with me, even though I know that you're not. That's sus. Before we fully dive into this, I want to first thank our sponsor, Manscaped, Manscaped. the global leader in men's grooming tools. Ah, oh, shit. I was supposed to reply to an email from Mail from Manscaped. Chat, remind me to do that. I, I'm supposed to reply to an email of a deal from Manscaped. Fuck. Wait, what was the code? I, can't, I, have, to, I have to show the code. Where's the code? And a free pair of boxers, which are extremely comfortable and breathable. So go over to manscaped.com and use the promo- Manscaped.com slash Crowley. 20% off free international shipping plus two free gifts. Well, code Crowley to check out these I can't watch this video without at least showing his code. your hygiene today. I gotta show his code, chat. <clears throat> December 5th, 2013. Talika Patrick spends her day at the Borges Medical Center in downtown Kalamazoo, working there as a first-year medical resident. The young doctor was described as being incredibly bright by her colleagues, with an extremely promising future ahead. Manscaped is- to those wait, who wait, knew wait, her, wait, she was wait, a fun-loving- Wait, 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 wait. Someone said Manscaped is a sus sponsor from Mr. GG. What? What? I've never had an issue with Manscaped. What happened? Oh, well, I'll, 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 I'll look into it. And just overall great person to be around. However, for whatever reason, on this particular day, Talika's personality seemed different. Upon her shift coming to an end, Talika would ask a coworker for a ride to the Radisson, a hotel yeah, located I'll check just out a few video miles away. The see. request seemed strangely frantic, almost pushy, and sensing that something may be wrong, the coworker agreed to take her there, dropping her off at the entrance before driving away. From there, cameras show as Talika attempts to rent a room, only to be turned away as she didn't have enough money or a proper ID, with the young woman having left her wallet back at her job. During this conversation, the employees at the front desk noticed that Talika appeared on edge and slightly incoherent, prompting a receptionist to ask if she was okay. But Talika brushed aside the concern and eventually left the hotel. 
Outside, Talika entered the hotel's complimentary shuttle, asking the driver to <coughs> drop her back off at the Borges so she could retrieve her wallet, return, and then pay for her room. But when the driver eventually pulled into the parking lot of the hospital, Talika nervously turned to him and said, I can't go back there with you, before rushing off ducking her head between parked vehicles as if she was attempting to hide from someone. The driver then watched as she got into her car and pulled off into the night. He would be the last known person to ever speak to her. On the road, Talika began driving frantically at extremely high speeds, weaving in and out of traffic, displaying signs that again, seemed to indicate that she was potentially being followed and that she was trying to evade someone or something. Her driving became Sus. so erratic that a concerned motorist would call the police and report her vehicle. But before the authorities could arrive, Talika's front left tire on her 1997 Lexus would burst, forcing the car off the road before it came to a stop in the dead of the night. That is really unlucky. 100 miles Holy away crap. from her home. Talika then grabbed the keys from her ignition, exited the vehicle, and was never seen again. 911, is that location of your emergency? Just turn it now. Uh, it's on uh, I-94, uh, the westbound lane. There's a car off the road down in the ditch. Within minutes, police officers would discover her car parked alongside a ditch. And upon searching the vehicle, all they would find were her personal belongings, like her wallet, cash, and a cell phone. But no sign of Talika herself. She left her cell phone? Authorities would go on to search the entire area for miles around, including the shores of a nearby lake, but found nothing. And with no sign of the young doctor, Talika Patrick was officially declared missing on the 6th of December. Leading up to her disappearance, everyone who came into contact with Talika that night all shared a similar story. Something was clearly off with her. She seemed nervous, even terrified, prompting some to immediately conclude that foul play was involved and that perhaps she had somehow been hunted down. To address this theory, police dogs would be brought in to track her scent trail, which bizarrely led them from her open car door directly to the side of the road before coming to an abrupt stop, seemingly insinuating that someone had picked her up, willingly or unwillingly. Adding to the suspicious nature of her disappearance, the night prior, Talika had called a friend of hers named James Davis, who was living in St. Louis at the time, and explained to him that she believed someone was trying to kill her, and that she needed to get away from Kalamazoo to go visit him. The and it's fuck? believed that she was driving to St. Louis to meet Davis immediately before she vanished, perhaps confirming that her concerns were in fact warranted. Given the nature of her vanishing, the story of Talika Patrick immediately became a viral news story, with the search effort quickly being launched to determine what had happened yeah, to her. Yeah, it sounds like someone's but stalking on, her. This would yield little to no results, as much like the air on that winter night, her trail grew deathly cold. However, on the internet, a new trail was forming. Hi, love, it's me. Like that video was frustrated by the just lack of answers. Awkward. In like like the, the entire video felt like she was just really almost like forced to do it. Started digging into the online history of Talika Patrick, which led them to their most important discovery yet, her YouTube channel. Going by the name of Sandra 3000 Casey, Talika would publish a series of nine videos within the span of one week in early November 2013, with one of the most infamous being a clip titled My Awesome Day, where she sits in front of her camera and addresses someone she refers to as Baby. Hi, Baby. Good night. It's Talika. I am just coming to you to say hi and uh, just to tell you about my day. The video certainly wasn't without its strange moments, as at one point she stops and touches her chest before saying, <clears throat> Baby, I felt that. While also going on. Uh. Uh. All right, <clears throat> weird. That was that made me feel uncomfortable. Uh, so, oh yeah, uh, so I was asking about uh, becoming a pooper. Just so, yeah. description. So the There's a link in the description. A watcher and Wendell and Wild. <laughs> Chat, we're gonna be watching shit all day. We got Wendell and Wild and a new I watcher video. Yeah. Upstairs. <laughs> but um, I have two more left. You want to carve one at least? Uh, yeah, I will. Oh, after this, I will. Yeah. What are you, uh, Probably after this video. Uh, 
A lot of pumpkin. That's fine. Happy Friday, y'all. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm excited. I got to watch Wendell a while. We should get like a group. Like, see if Michael wants to do it. Watch Lassie That's true. And like, Sieg, Michael, maybe Jimmy, something like that. Well, Jimmy should die. Yeah. I will. On to randomly burst out into song, which seems to last the majority of the video. And now I'm home. Pumpkin Hi. seeds are so good. Chat, I'm sorry I'm like disrupting the depressingness of this video. Oh, I'm sorry. But no, 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 it's not you. But uh, pumpkin, uh, we, there's this place near us that makes pumpkin muffins and they like do roasted pumpkin seeds in the pumpkin muffins. It's really I good. Tried that today. Yeah, that's true. No, they, yeah, I think they taste better, like the flavor, definitely. But I thought like the pumpkin seed idea was pretty cool. Okay, everyone stop being, stop talking about like happy stuff. It's, we're supposed to be depressed, okay? Everyone gets sad, sad moment, sad moment. Yeah. Put it up a little bit of fight, it's all right. And these somewhat unusual moments continue from here as each of our nine uploads follow this same exact format, serving as almost unscripted love letters to this unnamed man. In various clips, Talika even alludes to the potential relationship troubles between the two, referencing how she didn't really know what was going on between them. I don't know what's going on, you know, in your life and stuff. We have an idea, but I don't know. So this sounds like she was either in a long distance relationship or an online relationship, but the dude happened to just be a serial killer. So. Everything. But still adamantly reaffirming the fact that she wants to make things work and that she is still deeply in love. You do your best and I do my best and we give each other a chance so in love that she even filmed herself cooking extravagant meals made for two, going as far as to set the table for both of them, despite the fact that this date wasn't actually present. That's Here weird. Are my raw materials. That's weird. I don't even eat chicken. I'm vegetarian. But I want that for you. That's just, uh... potatoes so far. If you were here, this is what... It would be your plate. Broccoli and tomatoes and... Why do I feel like this is like human meat or so? You know what I mean? Like, like the, the way this video is set up feels like I'm watching like a cannibal cooking someone's dead body. You know what I mean? Most normal Ohio resident. <laughs> but you know what I mean? It's like, it just makes you feel off and unsettled. And within these videos, a few key Dark moments web make vibes, it clear yeah. that the two had actually met in person quite recently, as she points to a bouquet of flowers that she states, And here are the flowers from last time. Insinuating that the two had likely gone on some sort of date within the days prior. Viewing her content as a whole, despite some of the more unusual moments, it's nothing all that jarring, and it really just seems to show a woman who is desperately in love. And whether she was going through some relationship issues or perhaps just in some yeah, sort of long I don't know, man. That feels that those videos didn't feel really weird. Matter because these clips were clearly never meant to be seen by anyone but the man they were made for. And at first, investigators likely thought that they would do little in the way of helping to solve this case. However, upon questioning Talika's family and friends about these videos, a glaring red flag began to emerge, and the channel was thrown into a far different light. As according to all those close with her, at the time these videos were released, Talika Patrick should have been single. Patrick's family issued this statement in response to the new video. To our knowledge, Talika was not in a romantic relationship, and it's unclear to whom she is making reference in this video. You know what I mean? I feel video. like it was an online Not thing. once had Talika, a woman who was said to be quite open and talkative, mentioned to anyone that she was in a relationship. Friends, families, colleagues, and even neighbors never once heard about or saw her with another man. And even digging into her phone records revealed nothing in the form of romantic texts or frequent calls to an unnamed lover. By all accounts, Talika Patrick was undoubtedly a single woman. But if that was the case, then who was she talking to here? Bye. I love you. Who were these? Yo, thank you, Pink Moon Doll, for becoming a big pooper.
God, that's we've had a lot of big poopers. We have a lot of big poopers now. Thank you. It's fucking spooky, man. It's I agree. Videos for she kidnapped Nikki's herself. Words were true, referencing previous in-person dates. Then how had no one known about this relationship? And most importantly of all, why had she coincidentally gone missing under suspicious circumstances just one month after these strange videos were made? Putting all this into consideration, the suspicious activity on the night of her disappearance, moving as if she was running away, and the videos made for someone who seemingly didn't even exist in her own life, one theory began to emerge, a theory that pointed straight to foul play. Perhaps Talika had gotten involved in some sort of ill-fated, secretive relationship, only for things to turn sour, leading to Talika being hunted down and kidnapped, thus explaining why she seemed to be fleeing on the night of her disappearance. With this in mind, investigators began to dig deeper into Talika's online footprint, in a desperate search to uncover who this man truly was, believing that he may very well have some involvement in this disappearance though nothing could have prepared them for the drastic and highly unusual turn that they were about to face. Tonight, yet another twist in the mystery of the missing Kalamazoo doctor. Target 8 uncovered hundreds of tweets allegedly posted by Talika Patrick in the weeks before she went missing. To those who knew her, Talika was a well-put-together, extremely intelligent woman who was clearly of sane mind. But the discovery Layla, of thank her you. Twitter accounts began to paint a Boopie. slightly different picture. Boopie. In total, investigators would find five accounts that had all been active at different times throughout 2013, each of them belonging to Talika, and each of them having thousands and thousands of tweets, showcasing thousands? incoherent ramblings as if she was posting every single one of her thoughts, oftentimes even having conversations with seemingly no one at all, constantly saying things like, hi my friend, how are you? And, everything okay? Just woke up, sorry. To which no one would be specifically tagged and no one would reply. And the deeper you scroll, the stranger things get. As much like her YouTube channel, she spends most of her time referencing her love interest. It's like, it's like a one-sided conversation. Stating, oh, well, I felt you a little bit yesterday. Last night after you messaged, I felt you thinking about me. And hope you have a wonderful day. Love you. Bro, is her boyfriend in the upside down? What the fuck? Yo, Grumpy Grayson, thank you so much for becoming a little pooper. Yeah, that's weird. Yeah, I, I feel like the the I, I feel like the felt you a little bit yesterday, and then I felt you thinking about me. That's weird. That's weird. Much like her previous videos, these tweets would fail to gain any semblance of a response, which seemed to push her more and more into madness, creating more accounts and tweeting out even more frequently, typing messages as if she were expecting someone specific to find her. Should I start another page? Look, look for your friend. Let me know when you find her. Did you find me? I have been messaging you for the past two days from another Twitter account. I thought you'd find it, Sigh. Who are you talking to? It's the, it's the ghost boyfriend. And this boyfriend. is just a minuscule You're glimpse right. into her posting, as these accounts hold an impossibly vast amount of information with so many unusual moments. But by far the most bizarre detail to come of all these tweets was one name in particular, one of the only specific names mentioned across all of her pages, which she brings up over and over and over again. Marvin Sapp. At Marvin Sapp, good morning. When life gives you lemons, make lemonade. Again, Marvin Sapp, good morning. When life gives you lemons, make lemonade. At Marvin Sapp. Good morning. Don't be sad. God never puts more on us than we can bear. All three of these messages were posted within the span of 24 hours, and they were far from the only mentions of the famed Grammy-nominated gospel singer. Sometimes she would make blatant references to him and his music, oftentimes using his lyrics to point to a supposed connection between the two. Yo, thank you, Alex Davila. Am I winning? Yes. And though it's hard to prove outright with her tweets alone, it quickly became apparent that Talika's love interest, with whom she had seemingly tweeted to thousands of- So maybe it was one-sided? Maybe she was like insanely obsessed with him? So she was like delusional? But it doesn't explain why she just- Times. 
was in fact Marvin Sapp, introducing the possibility that Talika was perhaps just a crazed fan, which would make a few of her next tweets all the more disturbing. I have relocated to be with you, so I really hope you want me, so we can be in love and get married and have a couple babies. And, as you may or may not know, I attempted to visit you yesterday. Her messages were obviously concerning, as it began to grow apparent to investigators that- Fucking parasocials, man. I swear to God. Parasocials. Chat, never do this, all right? Come on. Come on, you're never going to have me. I'm married, get over it, okay? I know all of you probably make your Twitters and tweet at me all the time. You know, I get it, all right? But no, you don't, no parasocials here. Fucking weirdos. This relationship Talika had mentioned was solely a one-sided affair. After all, most would have assumed that someone as famous <clears throat> as Marvin Sapp would have no idea who this woman was. But this actually wasn't the case, as Sap did in fact know of Talika, only for all the wrong reasons. Around the start of 2013, Talika began obsessively messaging Sap and tweeting out to him in some sort of code, believing that the two were somehow spiritually connected and that he would eventually come to her, even claiming on her social media that what? she and Sap were actually married, something that Sap would eventually take note of, but never respond to, assuming that the woman may have been mentally unwell. However, when this failed to get a response, Talika then began to message Sap's children, further angering the singer and increasing his level of concern. And when that too failed to get a response, Talika would pack her bags and relocate from California all the way to Kalamazoo, which just so happened to be the exact location of Sap's congregation, as well as his home, a home that Talika would eventually visit in the dead of night, confirming the that her fuck? tweets referencing the matter were in fact true. Talika's behavior had gotten so serious that Sap himself convinced authorities to issue him an order of protection against her in September of 2013, pointing All to right. over 400 pages of unwanted correspondence coming from her. Sap would also ban Talika from attending his church ever again. This, however, only heightened her delusional state and would lead to her posting these videos on her channel, as by this point she was so far removed from reality that she truly believed that the two were lovers and that Sap was communicating with her telepathically and was somehow always with her. By the time December had rolled around, Talika's tweeting grew increasingly dark as she began to write about demons and how they were affecting her. Writing on the 4th of December, you reach me through a demonic portal that gives demons power over me and dilutes my spiritual authority. Please understand that I must protect myself spiritually. What the? Bro, are you the Doom Slayer? What is happening? Is she the Doom Slayer? Her spiritual authority? What the fuck? The very next day, Talika would go through each of her Twitter accounts, delete everything, and vanish alongside of the road. The discovery of these accounts adds a whole new element to the case and seems to point to one obvious conclusion, that at the time of the disappearance, <laughs> Talika was likely in the midst of some sort of severe psychotic break. But this still fails to explain what exactly had led to her actual disappearance. This question spurred on three prominent theories. One, that she had simply gone off into the woods alongside of the road attempting to hide from someone that just wasn't actually there, and instead was merely a figment of her delusions. I mean, that, that does happen in, in, uh, in psychotic states. Um, well, you know, when, 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 you, when you become manic, like, shit like that feels you know, all too real, like someone actually chasing you when there isn't someone there. And when hiding in the woods, she then succumbed to hypothermia, as wintertime in Michigan is notoriously cold. Two, that in the midst of this psychotic break, she decided to leave all her belongings aside and essentially run away, hitching a ride to somewhere far away. Thank you, lovely promise. I hope you're enjoying your time Bay, Possibly to start a new life. I want to go visit and Ireland finally, someday. Three, the theory that she truly was being followed, and that someone had grabbed her alongside of the road leading to her disappearance. As after all, that's exactly where police dogs had lost her scent. Later, a bloodhound tracked her scent directly from the car to the side of the road, and from there, the trail goes cold. Some would even further theorize that perhaps the victim of Talika- She ascended? Okay, no. The stalking may have had a hand in it, as by this point, Sap was well aware of the woman and highly concerned with her behavior, which alone gave him a clear motive to protect his family. 
While others pointed to more scandalous affairs, that the two had actually been romantic in a time past, only to suffer from a major breakup, thus causing Talika's mental health to spiral. With the relationship potentially putting his career in jeopardy, as who knows what Talika might say or do. And given his wealth, he certainly had the means to make this happen. However, this theory never really went further than mere speculation, and police would adamantly state that Sap was merely a victim of stalking and was never considered a person of interest in this case. The but why? Is nothing more than an innocent victim of an apparent stalking. And on a similar note, there was another early suspect that would emerge in the public eye, Talika's hmm. ex-husband, Ismail Calderon, to whom she had been married to for four years before splitting up in 2011. Immediately after the two had separated, Talika had gone onto an online nursing forum and accused Ismail of emotionally and verbally abusing her throughout their relationship, leading some to question whether he too had a hand in Talika's disappearance, perhaps as a well, means yeah. of silence. Don't get me wrong, her. I doubt the singer had anything to do with it, but like, why would you just not question him? You know what I mean? Or, or not getting revenge ask. for their relationship ending. But much like Sap, Calderon was never actually labeled as a suspect. In fact, it appears that there was only- Then who is gonna be labeled as a suspect? Her ex-husband or the guy she's obsessed with? Neither of them are going to be labeled as a suspect? What? Only ever one real person of interest in the minds of police, with that being James Davis, the last known contact that Talika had through her cell phone, as he was the one that Talika had called explaining that she was fearing for her life. Though given that he had lived so far away in St. Louis, he too would be cleared of any wrongdoings, and instead was eventually labeled as just a concerned friend. Then who is the suspect? No one, j just no one. You're just gonna say no one. It, you're not even. You're not even gonna question anyone at all. Good police work. Good police work, gentlemen. Uh, sh handshakes all around. Handshakes all around. Come on. And and with no suspect, no body, and no real concrete clues, speculation is really all we'd be left with. At least until April. I did 3rd, it. All right, it was Daro, everybody. When everything would change. First tonight, the developments continue to come in about a body found in a small Indiana lake. This was not the answer anyone wanted. Investigators are certain the body found in an Indiana lake is that of Talika Patrick. Nearly three months after her disappearance, a fisherman would come across the body of Talika Patrick floating in Lake Charles in the general vicinity where her car was found abandoned, with an autopsy eventually confirming her cause of death, drowning. So, no one bothered to check the lake for the body? With no signs or, of- Or, I mean, I, I don't know how big the lake is. So. Trauma evident on the body. Putting the pieces together, investigators theorized that Talika had suffered from a manic episode, causing her to believe that she was being followed and even hunted when she hurriedly drove off. And perhaps the shock of getting a flat tire led to her believing that someone was attempting to attack her, causing her to immediately grab the keys and flee from the car, fearing for her life. Without a flashlight and running in complete darkness, it's believed that Talika accidentally ran straight into Lake Charles, okay, which that is, is a body actually of water possible. located directly parallel to where her car was found, <clears throat> just a few hundred feet away. And tragically, that night, the water was incredibly cold and could have caused almost immediate hypothermia, with the lake actually completely freezing over that very night, hiding yeah. her body in an icy tomb and forever- Okay, yeah, that actually does make a lot of sense. If she's in a manic state and falls in the water, yeah. Her fate. All right. And as for the trail she left behind on the internet, well, despite being initially labeled as a profoundly disturbing internet mystery, with these videos being considered key pieces of evidence within her case, law enforcement now believe that this was all just merely a coincidence. As though her uploads and tweets do show evidence of her stalking, this stalking to them seems unrelated to her actual vanishing. And rather than being viewed as clues pointing towards foul play- Well, not necessarily related, but her mental state in a way, yeah. Police now view these videos as apparent signs of Talika's fractured mental health. This was the official explanation given for the disappearance of Talika Patrick, a tragic accident triggered by untreated mental illness. They only Although, check the shoreline. Some oh, are still sense. skeptical, including Talika's own family, who point to several unexplained inconsistencies, like her scent trail leading directly to the road, which was the opposite direction. Yeah, that's true. I didn't think about that actually. Direction of the lake. 
and the fact that the body of water where Talika had been found was supposedly thoroughly searched on the night of her disappearance and later even probed with sonar technology on two separate occasions, huh. all of which yielding absolutely no results. Despite the fact that that body of water is so small that most in the area actually consider it to be a pond. Oh, it's that small? Bruh. There's something sussy. Okay, I changed my mind. There's something quite sussy here. I thought it was like a large lake that they just didn't look through thoroughly. But it's a pond? All right. That's sus. As it's so minuscule that it's not even labeled on Google Maps or Earth. Which Yeah, makes that dude, dude, the lake I have in my backyard is bigger than that. It's all the more unusual that she wasn't discovered there sooner, prompting some to believe that she may have been kidnapped and killed elsewhere before her body was later dumped in the water to give the illusion of an accidental death. Another unknown in this case is what actually triggered her manic episode, as many would assume that something must have happened that led to her believing she was in imminent danger, with some believing that it may have been a threat from her ex-husband or even Marvin Sapp. But according to all witnesses around her that day, nothing at all out of the ordinary was reported that may have sparked this fear, and nothing would be found on her cell phone as well, leaving the true cause of her episode to Chat, it's not, it's not solely my lake, it's, just, it's connected to a, it's like a thing, you know. ...be unexplained to this day. It's not the a flex. was so distrusting of the initial investigation... I actually kind of don't like a having a lake in my backyard. ...would eventually be conducted, which would go on to show that Talika had water within her nasal cavity, a detail that, to the pathologists, proved for certain that she had in fact died by drowning, which officially ended the police investigation for good, with one investigator stating that... I do believe it's probably as, as solved as it's going to get. Though to this day, we're still left with many un... That's, that's classic cop work right there, chat. They don't go for the correct answer, they go for the good enough answer. That's normally what they do. ...answered questions, and for some, the mystery lives on. I hope you have a good night! Bye. I love you. I want to give a huge shout out to my gold tier patrons and my god tier patrons. Alexander Duran, America's Grumpy Uncle, Bazoo for- Man, that's depressing. Now it's time to walk away. I hope you enjoyed your stay. Did you laugh or cry or maybe subscribe? I'll thank you either way. You know I will miss you. I hope you return. Tell your friend or your mother to get me more views, please.